Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. Back on the other side of COVID, in fact, if you saw this last video, I, I thought it was, and it truly was COVID, and um, getting better every day, one of those kind of things, you know, it just takes a while. But I wanted to move on and continue to work with our Creedmoor Sports TRX 925 scale. So this time, I want to work with a feature that I was trying to test with it, and I found some instructions in the manual, and that is for it to automatically output the weights into an Excel spreadsheet, or you can use Google Sheets. Uh, it'll do the same thing, or other programs like that. So um, <clears throat> what you want to do is you need to set up the scale in a certain mode to be automatic for as far as how it sends out the data. That's what they tell you. So on the printing section of this manual, it tells you to hold down the mode button. Now, I've already done this, but I'll show you. The mode button down three times until it says unit. And then you press um, the mode button again uh, three times until it says print and then you see PRT here. And then from that point, then you can press the tear button to enter that menu. Now, you want it to be automatic, okay? And there's three options, hand, auto, and continuous. Hand mode or manual mode is not, they tell you, is not supported yet. So maybe they'll give us some um, software in the future. Uh, I suspect that, that would be like an auto trickler interface. That'd be where you need to do that, where you can manually configure some things. But I'm just guessing. Anyway, we have it in, we have it in uh, automatic there, and that's what we want. So I'll hit the mode, you see it goes to hand, and then hit continuous, but we want automatic. So I'll press tear to take that and to exit the menu. So that's a simple setup that you need to do. Then you need to get an RS-232 to USB uh, serial converter cable. And I'll put a link in the bottom of the video for the one I purchased. It's just something off, e off uh, Amazon. They're, they're cheap. I think it was 11 bucks or something. Uh, shipped to me. And that takes the RS-232, converts it to a signal into the USB, serial signal, and then the software that comes with this will configure into a COM port, which in the end is how it's going to communicate. Old, if you, if those of you go back to early days of DOS and Windows, you understand COM ports, but it's a communication port inside a legacy inside of Windows. Uh, so you'll do that. Then you need a program to read that, that data and input it into your spreadsheet. Well, 232 key is one they recommend in here. And in fact, I had already found that in my searches on the web because you can get it free. So it's, it's Smart Lux 232 key. Now, <clears throat> I worked with the free version of the program for a while and you can get it to work, but you're gonna get a lot of uh, stray data. And I'll show you what I mean, but it's like every time this thing zeros, or excuse me, every time this thing um, stabilizes, it outputs a value. Now I've reduced that a little bit um, but the, the initial testing I did on just the free software, I couldn't get quite the controls I want. I still think it can be done, but I went ahead and paid for their upgrade and it was 30 bucks, but you can get it for $5 for 90 days if you want to test it before buying it and, you know, cost you five bucks more or whatever, something like that. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to see that because, um, it's, it's a good free software. It'll work. It's just maybe some things better. And I still have things to improve on trying to figure out this interface, but I've spent, many hours already trying to get it dialed in just right. Um, so if, if anybody out there knows better than what I'm going to show you, please help me out. Uh, please let me know how to configure this because there's a couple things it does. Not a big deal, a little annoying, but not a big deal. And it's in the interface software, not necessarily the scale, but it's how you control it. So anyway, we'll start with this program. When we get ready, we're going to go to the start menu. But first we have to configure the input menu. So when we look here, this is where our COM port comes in. Now, the one I got uses a chipset called FTDI, this conversion cable, because in one end of it, it has a computer chip. It does some changing of the uh, signal into something we can use on our PC. And so that's this chipset. And so you can find it quite easily. It'll be COM5. It, automatically, it'll pick this up most often anyway. Then you got to set up this device, and you need to set it up for A and D, no handshaking. Okay, so... That is, uh, that's just one of the defaults you need to set up on this software. And I'll go through these sort of major defaults to the point that I'm at today. It may not be perfect yet. So uh, again, if you can help me or make me get this better, I'd really appreciate it. But we'll see what we do. So anyway, baud rate or bits per second, they call it 9,600. Data bits, eight. Stop bits, one. Parity is none. Flow control is none. The terminator, how it selects the next signal, sort of like a carriage return on your keyboard, enter is going to be line feed, and that's a value of 10, an ASCII code that's sent out. So that's the first thing. But if you notice these asterisks on some of these items, um, let's see, I don't have, do I have any of them on this? No. 
uh, well, this one, but I'm not using the customized feature. It's the plus version only. So this is where I had to upgrade to change some of these things. And I, I don't know that I had to, but it made it a little better. You know, I think I think I can still get better yet. So anyway, this is one of them here. The asterisk, so you got to have the plus version. Ignore consecutive duplicates. So if it stabilized and a millisecond later it stabilized again and sent that signal out, you could get the same value over and over and over. Um, so I tell it to ignore a consecutive exact value duplicate. Uh, that helps to remove some of the stuff you'll see here in just a minute. Um, and then that's, that's pretty much it on that screen. Now, now we got to tell it how we want to output our data. So there's several options here on the keyboard type. And the automatic or all compatibility mode, that worked okay. But occasionally I got some weird characters popping up in the line that were alphanumeric and graphic characters and not necessarily straight and numeric values. So I played around with different ones in the, the QWERTY interface, uh, the US straight ver US version of it seems to work the best. Um, we'll see over time. The other thing I changed here was the, um, the delay. So milliseconds between characters. So I played around with this and it's sort of a delay between, hey, I saw a value of what's the next one, right? What's the next one? What's the next one? And um, I changed, bumped it up from five to 20 milliseconds. It seems to help get rid of some other duplicate and strange characters that would still occasionally pop up. Um, so I did this also here. Uh, this is a modification that um, you, something you end the signal with. So every time you get a signal, well, you want to end it. So what I did was I, I did it. I said basically hit an enter key like you would type something here, enter, go to, go to the next one, every five values. In other words, every five digits that it would read. And not 100% sure, but again, seems to have helped. I had to work through these just trying to figure this out. And so that's where I got to. Um, <clears throat> on this one, the only thing I, I really haven't, I guess the only thing I changed was for updates here. And so there's really nothing I've changed yet on this. The one exception is with the plus version, you can export your, your configuration. So you can save a setup. And that's really nice. And so the next time you want to use it, you just load that setup. Now, while I say that, it's really more useful if you're trying different configurations because once you get a configuration that really works, it remembers it. So um, it's only when you're trying different configurations and ways of using the data. Okay, and that's pretty that's pretty much it then. So what you'll do then, and I'll show you a bit, we're going to weigh our, our infamous bullet checking in here. Um, we're going to start, and I'll show you, how, we'll show you some of the things I see. So I try to start with a scale zeroed out, and it is. So hit start. Now you come over here and this is where it's going to start entering the data. Okay, you just click on a cell and it's going to enter the data. Now let me show you what happens. So we'll do, we'll do our checks just like we do before. Try to put the bullet the center of the pan. Put on our airflow cover because there is some airflow up here the heating system running. It's pretty cold today. And then you see it types in the value because the scale stabilized. You can watch these, the dot and bar here when it stabilizes. When they disappear, that's when the scale outputs that value. So now we'll take it back off. And I tried playing with just taking it off and put it back on real quick, and it kind of gave some weird behavior. So if you put it on back here again, well, now it's, now it's back to zero. Now, this is where sometimes it, it kind of gets strange and sometimes it doesn't. So I'll show you what that is. So we'll do it up, put our bullet in there again, let it stabilize, and there's our next value. That's exactly the behavior you want, okay? And that's been happening fairly regularly. But when I take this off and put it back to zero, often you'll get a zero right there it did it okay it's when it stabilizes again the scale is trying to output that value and that's what the software is reading i've not been able to figure out how to get rid of that so easy enough i mean when you get to your data you could delete that out of there well, here's another one and it's stabilized in 175.4 now if you wait long enough or if you have the cover off and you see your scale getting moved around by airflow a little bit every time it stabilizes it's going to try to write that value so that's why I am trying to do it in this method. Now, um, again, I think I'm going to remove one of the faces here so I can do powder work a bit better. So they're getting it, you know, without taking this on and off all the time. So now we'll check our bullet again, put it back in the middle of the pan, and let it stabilize. Okay, and there's our value again. So easy enough, right? So you can just delete the zeros out and run your statistics, which is what I did down here on uh, averages or you know standard deviations, whatever you decide you want to run. But uh, really useful to get that data out and not have to write it down all the time. 
Um, it's just occasionally, like I'll show you, if, if I just pull the bullet off and put it back on there without it going all the way to zero and stabilizing, it's going to write a value sometimes and sometimes not. And then sometimes you get some weird characters if you kind of interrupt the scale and trying to go back to zero or measure to a final weight. But if we go back to zero, let it do its normal thing, everything seems to be good. Yeah, see, it goes back to zero and stabilizes. So it's kind of like the scale may be seeing some instability, and it decides not to send the data out when you're doing that. And we're back to normal. So anyway, I find this very useful. It's going to save a lot of time when you're doing multiple charges, and you don't want to mess with writing stuff down, what was every charge, and you know, but you would like to keep a record of it. Well, there you go. It inputs right into a spreadsheet, Excel, Google Sheets, whatever you want to use, and um, you'll be set to go. So anyway, hope you like it. I think this is a very useful feature, uh, and uh, I'm planning to use it quite a bit in our load development. So if you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe.